Gentlemen, ladies, welcome back to Tied Up in Sydney. Today is the full Windsor necktie knot, and this will be the definitive on how to tie the full Windsor step by step. And I'm going to use the shorthand model that I've been discussing. If you want a little bit of a recap, click right up here, the oriental necktie knot. I give a quick introduction to the shorthand model just to help you read it along. Uh, but I'm going to share this knot with you using the shorthand. It'll make it easier for you to learn the steps. I'm also going to share a few thoughts on getting the length right, right to the midpoint of the belt line. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about the size of your full Windsor necktie knot. I'll take it down and I'll show you how to tie it. All right, let's get this knot set up. The first step in the sequence for the full Windsor is left into the diagram. So that tells me the seam side has to be facing in. And with these classic knots, uh, the blade is going to be always be on your right hand side. So that's the wide side of the tie and tail will be on your left. Okay. To get the length right for you, it does depend on the width of your neck, the length of your torso and the length of your tie. So it's going to be different for everybody. You do have to trial and error a little bit to get your length right. Uh, for me, for the full Windsor, if I want the blade of the tie to rest right at the midpoint of my belt line, I know that this tail has to start just beyond my solar plexus. All right, step one in the Windsor is left into the diagram and my hands change. Step two is center out. So that'll always going to be with your blade here. So center out of the diagram. And on this one, my hands don't change. Center in and center out, your hands won't change. Okay. All right. Now right into the diagram. Then our hands change. Step four is left out of the diagram. And our hands change. And then center in. Again, the blade is going to feed through the center, coming off the back, and our hands don't change. Now right out of the diagram. Left in to the diagram. And again, center out. And it's at this point that we would be going through the loop that we just created. But I like to check and make sure that I've got my length right first before I put too much effort into shaping and forming up my knot. So if I, again, if I just pinch this, um, the creation of the knot, as well as the tail, and I just cinch that up at this point, now I can see that the blade of the tie is going to fall right to my belt line. And I've got my length right. So I'm just going to Come back under here, loosen this up a bit more. And then I'm just going to feed the blade through. Now, from here, you can do any number of things with a, with a full Windsor. You can just tighten it up and, and leave it without a dimple, or you can create a dimple if you like. Um, I'll just make a dimple. I'll, I like to just uh, pinch that fabric together up underneath this loop. And then what I do is I, I just reach behind and I want to grab that fabric that's making up the blade of the tie. I'm just going to start to pull up from the back and that'll tighten the knot. Once I've done that, just give it a quick little shape. And again, I've got my length correct. I can bring my collar down and I'm ready to start my day with a full Windsor. So it's an interesting thing about the full Windsor knot, and that's the size. Everybody thinks of the full Windsor as this very large, bold, expressive knot, and it really can be, and you can make it stand out more or less depending on um, how you organize the length of your tie. Let me, let me show you what I mean. Unless you're tying a super skinny tie, uh, most ties become gradually thinner the further up you go. So where I begin this knot is really going to start to impact on how wide the fabric is at the point where it's making my knot. So before when I tied it and I wanted to get the length perfect right to the midpoint of my belt line, I knew that I had to be just beyond my solar plexus. But if I were to just pull this down a bit more and maybe just above my navel and I tie the full Windsor again, so left in, center out,
right in, left out, center in, right out, left in, center out. Okay, now I'm just going to bring this up. You're going to see now that my, my length is way off, right? The, 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 the blade only comes to about my, my, uh, my belly button here. But if I finish off the knot, okay, so I'm just going to tighten this up a bit. I'm not going to bother with a dimple because I just want to make a quick point for you. So I'll just tighten it up, cinch it up, bring the collar down. So yes, my length is off, okay? Length is definitely off. But the knot is much bigger now. It's bolder. It's more expressive. So. Now I'm just going to throw on a vest. So if you don't have a three-piece suit in your repertoire, I uh, definitely recommend one, or at least having a vest that you can interchange with different suits. Because what that does is it allows you to tie a larger, bolder, more expressive knot and not have to worry about having the length of your tie right. So here, the length is wrong. It's at my, it's at my belly button instead of my belt line. But I throw on a vest. doesn't matter. And now that, that Windsor is super bold, very expressive, very large, and it's a beautiful knot. All right, everybody. Well, thanks again for watching Tied Up in Sydney. I do hope that you got some value from this video on the full Windsor. Uh, again, learning the shorthand steps so that you always know that you're tying it right, getting the length right, how to get the knot to be a bit bigger, using a vest to, to, to show off a, a more bold, expressive pattern. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content, guys. I'd love to see your comments down below, and please subscribe.